these three ICs are the TC4420. These are high-speed MOSFET driver integrated circuits. Um, they are very nice for a variety of reasons, as I will explain. Now, what makes this circuitry different? Of course, again, I, I am no longer using this board. It works well and everything. The circuit design is simpler in that I'm not using the CMOS logic and the interface circuit because this takes care of the interfacing. But the question is, you, it becomes more critical on the integrated circuit programming. You cannot have shoot through with this board, but with this here, apparently you can't either. I'm using the same four transistors as in previous videos. This allows me to switch the gate voltages on to full VCC, irregardless of the three or five volt logic. And, as you can look at the motor rotation, it forwards and reverses. You'll notice off to the side here, here are two parallel in-channel MOSFETs. That is what I use for speed control and enable. Instead of a get, um, and that comes off this IC through pulse width modulation. Thus, I can control the speed by placing a couple of in-channel MOSFETs in the ground side of the circuit between ground and the H-bridge itself. This is an old trick. It's essentially a motor control, and you're using these to swap polarity. These, this you can look at as a single MOSFET because they're paralleled, and so forth. The advantages of the TC4420s, besides, uh, okay, let's look at an important factor here. If I kill the power, I don't have my voltages, as long as I have VCC connected to these integrated circuits, it shuts it down automatically. It's not dependent on having the uh, control logic on or off as far as that goes. Alright, so that's the latest iteration of this design. I'll go over the schematic for you, and we will begin by summarizing why I have done all of this. The idea, of course, being learning CMOS circuits, interfacing the problems between 3 and 5 volt microcontrollers versus driving MOSFETs, transistors, and so forth. I'll go over that in the next couple of videos. I appreciate you watching this. Oh, oh, one more, one more thing. These particular integrated circuits will drive a motor directly. Just connect it between the two outputs on between these two. It will drive a small motor directly without the power MOSFETs if you keep it to an amp, amp and a half. The spec sheet says it says six amp peak. Um, I wouldn't go over an amp, amp and a half, personally. So like I said, you can use these to drive a motor directly, and I'll show you how that is done as well. Appreciate you listening. Um, please click the like button and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel at, or visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. And press that subscribe button. Thank you and appreciate your time. All right, here is the circuit that you saw in the video. I have two P channel MOSFETs, Q1 and Q2, and two N channel MOSFETs, Q3 and Q4. I have two TC4420s, they're eight pin dips. I have two inputs, A and B. The four diodes you hear, see here really don't exist outside. They are internal to the MOSFETs. I draw them in anyway because some people were upset that I wasn't drawing in internal diodes. Fine. There they are. 
In the ground side of the H bridge, I instead connected this circuit here, a TC4420, and a couple of parallel in-channel MOSFETs. A high on the input will switch on the power to the H bridge, or complete the current path, I should say, through ground. In other words, if you look at the circuit down here at the bottom, I simply removed the ground connection and wired it directly into this. By using that kind of configuration, I could change one of these to a TC4429, connect the two inputs together, and by using a 20 and a 29 together, a high will turn the motor on in one direction, a low will go in the other direction. And you could use the circuit below to turn the motor on and off and to pulse width modulate the circuit for speed control. All right, illustrated here is A is going to be low and B is going to be low. And this is going to turn on Q1 and Q2, switching both sides of the motors to VCC. This is known as the stop mode. All right, here we have A high and B high. It's going to switch on both in-channel MOSFETs, Q3 and Q4, switching both sides of the motor to ground. This is known as the brake mode. All right, we, now we have switched A low and B high. A low on A will turn on the P channel Q1 and a high on B will ch turn on in-channel MOSFET Q4. So we establish a current path through Q1 through the motor to ground through Q4. This is known as, I guess we'll call it the forward. We'll call it forward. All right, in this condition, we have A high and B low. A high input on A will output a high. It will turn on in channel Q3, a low on B will have a low output, current turning on P channel Q2. We establish a current path through Q2, through the motor, to ground through Q3. The current now is going in the opposite direction from before, and we will call this reverse. This completes this series on the TC44 and TC44. 20 and 29 MOSFET drivers. I appreciate you watching my videos. If you'll please hit the like button, I would appreciate it. And visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Uh, keep checking back. I got more stuff coming down the line. Thanks for listening.